Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Lord Jesus, make us worthy in the abundance of your grace and mercy to glorify your resurrection with pure hearts and to celebrate your victory with holy hymns and to proclaim your might with pure tongues. We thank you for your love and we worship you crying out, Christ is risen, Christ he is truly risen. To you be glory to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the living and immortal one who gave life to his people by his victorious cross and salvation to his church and happiness to his flock by his resurrection. When he appears, he will give joy to his inheritance. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives, now and forever. Amen. We worship and praise you, O only begotten Son. You descended into the darkness of the tombs and worked wonders in the realm of the dead. By your resurrection you freed the captives, and by your voice you awakened the righteous. And the just who had gone to the rest in the sleep of death. You gathered the nations to worship you and to proclaim your salvation. They rejoice and they cry out. On Friday the king endured pain and was crucified, and today victory has been achieved by his resurrection. On Friday a lance pierced his sacred side, and today in his compassion the waters of baptism flow. On Friday he was crowned with thorns, and today he has adorned his church with a crown of splendor. Today is the day of rejoicing in the resurrection. Today is the day of rejoicing for all who have gone to their rest in the hope of the resurrection. Today, with the fragrance of this incense, the church and her children celebrate and sing hymns of glory, saying, O Creator of life, you have saved us by your passion and have given us life by your resurrection. Now renew our image by your grace. Clothe our bodies with the power of the Spirit so that we may shine in the robe of glory and in its light to see you, the true Bridegroom. In your grace, make us and all the faithful departed worthy of your heavenly kingdom, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever.
O Lamb of God, who sacrificed yourself for us, we give you thanks, O incense of forgiveness. We worship you, for you have brought us close to your Father. Enriched us by your birth, purified us by your baptism, sanctified us by your crucifixion, reconciled us to the Father by your resurrection. Raised us up by your ascension and adorned us with the gifts of your Spirit. Now, O Lord, accept our incense and fill us always with your sweet fragrance, so that our tongues may never cease in giving thanks to you now and forever. Amen. Aloha, Kadisha, Hayat, Kadisha, Lahoyahota, Mishihod, Kobnet, Behet, Mite, Ibrahim, Kadisha. Church is rejoicing for her shepherd truly rose. Christ has died for his people, conquered death to give new life. the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy, my hope, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God on their behalf is for salvation. I testify with regard to them that they have zeal for God, but it is not discerning. For in their unawareness of the righteousness that comes from God and their attempt to establish their own righteousness, they did not submit to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for the justification of everyone who has faith. Moses writes about the righteousness that comes from the law, 
The one who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will go up into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or, Who will go down into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we preach. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For no one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses, for one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. For the scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Praise be to God always. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Rahmada Raho Dilan to the praise, glory and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. Find this incense. Kiriya Desan. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaim life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Luke writes, While they were still speaking about these things, Jesus stood in their midst and he said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified, and they thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I, myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy, and they were amazed, and they asked him, and he asked them, have you anything to eat? And they gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it, and he ate it in front of them. And then he said to them, these are my words that I have spoken to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah would suffer from and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, 
beginning from Jerusalem, and you are witnesses of these things. This is the truth, peace be with you. And he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Of course, though we're already well into many weeks of the celebration of the resurrection, we have a gospel from St. Luke, which is actually the day of the resurrection itself, our Lord's appearance to his apostles on that morning. And of course, the two great lessons that are in that moment are Peace, peace be with you. Shlomo, the idea of health and well-being and wholeness, being healed. And understanding the scriptures, hearing the word of God. We're told the same thing by St. Luke is done to the two people traveling, the two men traveling to Emmaus. That there's a moment in which our Lord's talking to them and he opens their mind to understand the scriptures. This is a gift from God. Anyone can read the scriptures. To understand them, that is a gift from God. And we see it clearly articulated by the evangelist Luke in these two episodes. The peace is the first greeting, this wholeness and well-being. And one of the things, and I mentioned it in the reflections this week in the bulletin, one of the things, hopefully, humanity is learning in the midst of all of this, whatever you want to call it, is that other human beings are necessary. You know, since 2007, we have our phones, we have our computers in our pockets, we text, we email, and we always thought this was fine. It was a nice replacement. And so instead of meeting people, we would text them, we'd email them. Apparently, millennials have a terror of phones because even that carries an emotion in your voice, and that, we don't want that. But we have learned that without human contact, it is profoundly devastating, not only to our psychological and emotional life, but also even to our physical life and our immunity systems. This is just not healthy. So we may not die of COVID, but there are infinite number of other things that we can die from hiding in our basements. So the first thing that our Lord wishes them is peace, well-being. And the reason why I bring up this human contact is, of course, of course, we've come here, well, for our Lord God, but also for this Sunday for Master Evan. This is the benefit of little parishes because you can be the star of the show when it comes to First Communions. No longer do we have the days where 700 kids, all the boys filled up one side of the church and all the girls filled up and you were just processed through. We remember those days. But of course in our parishes, they've always been small and more familial. We've usually had more children, but in this instance, for Evan. But of course, what is the reception of the Holy Eucharist? that cannot be replaced by television or televising or digitalized or anything, is that contact. So the contact that we learn on a natural level that we have to have with other people or else we will go out of our minds. And we are now educating and forming an entire generation of little neurotic OCD children who are going to go on the rest of their lives being germaphobes. The poor things, of course, have no choice. We were mentioning to the Carter family yesterday in Spain when they, the children were not allowed to come out of their buildings for six weeks. So the children in Spain began developing eating disorders, sleeping disorders, and a number of the children were showing signs of PTSD. This is insane. 
We need contact with other human beings. But of course, on this day of First Holy Communion, what is Holy Communion? It is contact with the living one, contact with the life-giving God of light and of power and of the resurrection, body, blood, soul, divinity, really, truly, substantially present. That can't be replaced. This is the way the Lord God has created the healing of the human race through the divine mysteries, through the sacraments. So the Eucharist will not just be dropped into your hand from a distance. There are other things that are more important in existence than viruses. I'm not saying none of this is important, but we are really becoming unbalanced overall. And that we should have our children in Spain developing de eating disorders and all of these things. We are torturing the children. This is not acceptable. There's something not balanced. But when it comes to Holy Communion, this is what we celebrate to this day because this is the divine embrace that our Lord comes to bring. Master Evan, this contact of the living one, the luminous one who is unclouded, unshadowed by any of its brilliance, these magnificent terms that we have in our Syriac tradition, the bright one who cannot be clouded, that is the one who comes to us in physical contact through the divine Eucharist, body, blood, soul, divinity, really, truly, substantially present. And that's what we come to celebrate. We celebrate the living one who brings us life. We celebrate the living one who comes to wish us shlomo, peace, and well-being, and health. And we come to the living one so that not only can we embrace him in Holy Communion, the purpose is not for our reception, the purpose that is in being received, he receives us and transforms us. We may receive the divine host physically, through our mouths, through our tongues, through swallowing, but the purpose is that our Lord receive us and that touch to bring life to us, to heal us, to transform our lives, and to give us hope, to know that there is light which guides everything in our lives. And that is why that second grace that we see on this morning of the resurrection is to open our minds to the scriptures, to pray for the grace to understand and to hear and to understand the word of God. So these two gifts today, and may God lavish them abundantly upon Master Evan. Because you're actually quite smart. You know that, right? Yeah, you know that. You know you're smart. Precocious would also be a word for it. But he watches everything, sees everything, notices. And that's great. Always be curious. Always be investigative. Always learn. And do you like to read yet? You getting there? Reading. Okay, I figured that was much. We have to interject these into the sermon or else you lose them, of course, after three minutes and so. So are we ourselves, the large ones, the big people, the grown-ups, the ones who have already walked this path? Let us thank the Lord God, the luminous one who gives us the possibility to find life and health through the divine mysteries. And let us ask that he give to us, to lavish upon Evan, of course, and his family, peace, well-being, health. And that may he open our minds and our spirits to the divine light of the charity of the Sacred Heart, so that we ourselves will know that this path that God lays out before us, now, today, not last week, not six months ago, but now, is still illuminated by hope, for those who have the minds with understanding, who can hear the voice of God, and who understand that God is always present to us to lead us through that divine touch, through those divine mysteries. And may we render gratitude for the beauty of what our Lord wishes us in that shlomo, 
Peace be with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We continue on page 748 with our profession of faith. We believe in one God. sheets in your pews for the transfer him for the resurrection. Clothed in majesty,
Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saint Mary, and Saint Jude, and Saint Serapion. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered, for the attentions of all the members of this parish, especially for Evan and the Carter family. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of St. John Maron, our first patriarch, on page 897. 897. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Good and holy God and Father, through your only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you have accepted this spiritual and holy banquet for us. Accept these pure offerings and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make us worthy to approach your sanctuary with pure hearts and clear consciences. Grant us the peace that your only Son gave to his holy disciples, so that we may give one another the same peace with a holy kiss. We raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. Peace, love, and faith, brothers and sisters, from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And may the God of peace be with us. Amen. O Lord, may your peace and security and your love, grace, and divine mercy be with us and among us all the days of our lives that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, we bow before you and ask that your merciful right hand 
Rest upon your servants who are here before your majesty. Make us, mark us with the sign of life that we may raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. Father of mercies, Lord of creation, Lord of the universe, unsearchable God, you are the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, born of you and equal to you. He is the radiance of your glory, the image of your being, and by your power the maker of all. In him you created the world in your grace, in him we see you, and from him we receive your spirit. In him the mystery of the Trinity, hidden from all ages, was revealed. We praise and thank you with our mouths that have been blessed by your word and cleansed by your forgiving his soul. Those who glorify you are countless, cherubim and seraphim, and thousands of spiritual beings standing before you, the myriads of fiery ranks serving your majesty. They sing triumphant hymns with harmonious voices. O Lord, although we are your weak and sinful children, make us worthy through the gift of your grace to sing with them and to proclaim. To you, O God the Father, for you have exalted our human nature through your grace. In your abundant mercy you sent your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, into the world. He came down to us and by the Holy Spirit became flesh of the Virgin Mary, accomplishing all things for our salvation. <laughs> Do this in memory of me, 
For whenever you gather in my name and eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember my death and resurrection until I come again. suffered and endured for us, and your liberating and life-giving plan of salvation, your miraculous incarnation, your saving passion, your life-giving cross, and your life-giving death, your solemn burial, your joyous resurrection, your ascension into heaven, your sitting at the right hand of the Father, and your glorious second coming when you shall reward all people according to their deeds. O Lord, have compassion and pour out your mercy upon all of us, that we may enjoy the gifts of your heavenly church. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you and your sins, and That by his descent he may make this bread the body of Christ our God. the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God. Amen. Through these holy mysteries may sinners be absolved and enemies be reconciled. May those who hate find peace and those who are sad find joy. May those who grieve be consoled and those who are sick be healed. May those in distress find comfort and those who repent be humbled. May the prophets be remembered, the apostles honored, and all the martyrs crowned. And may the confessors exalt and all the angels rejoice. May your divinity be praised and your trinity be honored, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always and forever. Amen. We offer you, O Lord, this sacrifice, the memorial of your passion, crucifixion, death, and resurrection for your church throughout the world. She is founded upon your hope, remembers your salvation, and awaits your kingdom. We offer it for the bishops of the true faith, grant them the wisdom and the knowledge that comes from you, and make them worthy to proclaim your kingdom, especially Francis, the Pope of Rome, Rashara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, and Gregory John, our Bishop. May all the shepherds of the Church sanctify their days by caring, in fear and in justice, for your people that you have entrusted to them. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the priests and deacons here and everywhere 
who serve diligently and are vigilant over their flocks. May they receive their reward. Remember those who have taken vows of chastity and holiness, who keep their bodies and thoughts pure, that they may triumph in their efforts. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders who love you and all those whom you wish to govern us. Strengthen us and assist them. Strengthen and assist them so that we may live in peace under their leadership. Crown them with true faith and good works. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O oh Lord, in your grace, what, excuse me. Remember, O oh Lord, the children of the church, redeemed by your passion and given life by your death, for they share in your resurrection, those who are far and those who are near, those who are weak and those who are strong. Remember those who have presented these offerings upon your holy altar and accept them on your heavenly altar. Hear their just requests and in exchange for their earthly gifts. Grant them the gifts of heaven. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, in your grace, those whom we have remembered and those whom we have not. In your mercy, have compassion on them. Remember especially those in distress who experience hardships, the poor, the weak, and the grieving, those in exile, captives, and prisoners, the oppressed, outcasts and the dejected, orphans and widows. Remember those bound by the chains of sin and subjected to various passions. Through your body and blood, may their sins be forgiven, their faults be pardoned, their weaknesses be cured, and their wounds be healed. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, in your great mercy, our fathers and patriarchs, the teachers of your holy church, who were pleasing to you from the beginning. By the glorious light of their teachings, they brought people back from the darkness of ignorance to the true light of the holy gospel, and they fought to preserve the integrity of the true faith. Through their holy prayers, grant peace to your churches, monasteries, and convents, and put an end to wars and strife throughout the world. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, all your saints, especially Mary, the holy and ever-Virgin Mother of God, the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, and all those who profess the Trinity in true faith. Through their holy prayers and petitions, look upon us with eyes of compassion, and may your calming and pleasant face shine upon us. Make us worthy to share in their reward and their inheritance, and may their shadow be a shelter of protection for us on the fearful day of judgment. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, in the sweetness of your compassion, receive the souls of our brothers and sisters, the children of baptism who have gone to you in the true faith from this world of darkness, especially those from the sacrifices offered. May the mystery of your body and blood be a pledge of life for them, a fire that consumes all sins and a burning coal that destroys transgressions. In your mercy, grant them rest in the dwellings of light and joy in the heavenly Jerusalem. O lover of all people, grant us life, abundant blessings and mercy, and forgive our sins and theirs. deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions, hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, and join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will that in all sin and in all things your blessed name 
may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. O Lord, adorn our souls with your truth and sanctify us by your holy gifts. May you dwell among us that we may be secure. May your peace live within our hearts, your faith abide in our consciences, and your victorious cross be a true sign of protection for your church. May our tongues proclaim your truth and repeat your holy prayer, and our lips pour forth glorious thanks to you, that with you we dare to call the Father Abba, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our O Lord, do not lead us, your lowly children, into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And O Lord, we have approached your holy altar, the source of all divine gifts. May we share in your holy mysteries and join the assembly of those who glorify you, that we may raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy love, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory 
Again and again, we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. We thank you, O God, Father of great mercy, and we praise and glorify you for having made us worthy of your holy banquet and of sharing in your life-giving mysteries. We implore you, do not condemn us on that fearful day, but deliver us from all shame and disgrace, that we may join the assembly of your saints, so that with them and among them we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. O Christ, the King of glory, we entrust our lives to you, knowing that you shall take care of our needs. Help the elderly with your mighty power. 
Restrain the young with your guidance. Nurture children and instruct them in your divine teaching. And sign each one of us with your victorious cross. To you be glory with your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So it's just to call your attention to the bulletin, which is also online. We have a few copies at the doors for the directives that will try to be following the rules over these next months. It is such a delight to see all of you among us. And of course, it is a great gift that our shepherd in Brooklyn is asking us to try to keep these parishes open. And so, we're not the only ones. But it is such a delight to have you with us. And it is beautiful that the Lord God allows us to continue on a path of hope. And so just calling to the directives, the one thing I would just say for this week, especially with our celebration of Master Evan, is that from now on, those who wish to stay and pray, you are welcome to stay here as long as you like. But if you wish to visit, simply move outside and then keep your distancing or whatever, instead of all gathering up inside the church. So just in order to keep a balance, I don't mean this, this is a true crisis that we live in, but we need to keep a balance. And so anyone who wishes to remain and pray at the end of the Mass, you're more than welcome to stay. And everyone else who wishes to visit in that, just please step outside onto the sidewalks in that, and then visit as much as you like. And to Master Evan, Mabruk, your first Holy Communion. May the Lord Jesus grant you great fidelity, loyal devotion, profound faith, hope, and charity all the days of your life. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.